Live from the Export Beer Garden Studio and brought to you by Export Ultra, the beer for here. This is the Agenda Podcast for Friday, the 9th of August. The Agenda Podcast, the home of sporting nonsense and claptrap. Brought to you by Export Ultra. Morning, lad. Happy Friday. God, so good. What what have been your pits and peaks of this week so far? Shit, that's a good question. Um, Because for me, the peaks have been any of the um, medals that we've won. All of them, not just gold? Yeah, any of them. I've got to be honest, even like Tori Peters who didn't make the finals of her javelin, even that, just watching our athletes out there competing, it's been the highlight of my week. Yeah, the double gold overnight, that was good. Double gold overnight was yeah. good, we will get into that. Um, Pits for me was waking up like I'd been shot on Tuesday morning. Oh, that's right. Well, the, obviously the, the, the Pits is obviously the announcement of Shawnee J. We, just, oh, presu- yeah. we just presumed you took a, 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 a day of bereavement. Yeah. Just, a, just a, especially after on Monday's Mad Monday podcast, you fully weighed into the fact he's re-signing with the Warriors. Yeah. Well, so. fully weighed in's a, <laughs> a broad brushstroke, but <laughs> Di asked me if I thought he was going to retire. I was like, you don't turn down hundreds of thousands of dollars. Turns out you do. Some, <laughs> some people do. I didn't know that. Yeah, they do. I didn't know that some people were in that position. Well, yeah, well, especially when you got hundreds of thousands of dollars the other way yeah, as well. Yeah, it's unfathomable yeah. to me. <laughs> You know when people leave their job and they say they're going to spend more time with their family? I'm like, who the fuck can afford to just not work and <laughs> just spend time with their family? That's, we all know that's a line. You've been boned. I know. So You've why been bother boned. saying it? Why not just say they fired me? I don't know. It's some sort of, digni- who's, who's, some sort of dignity thing. I don't know whose pride people are protecting with this. Spend more time with the family. Yeah, yeah. It stinks of you've been boned. I've been fired. Yeah. Just say you've been fired. Um, yeah, what were the peaks for you? Uh, the peaks, so the medals, the medals were great. Yeah. Uh, peaks for me is you not being here on Tuesday uh, <laughs> and doing the podcast with Heath. No, just kidding. Oh, I, can, I can do it all five days next week if you'd like. <laughs> and no, uh, uh, peaks for me is the launch of the Great New Zealander. Um, oh, yeah. I think that's a great uh, content piece to release amongst the most content orgy heavy period of the ACC in terms of the Olympics. We're going to get spat out the end of the Olympics and have nothing to talk about and yeah. be like, why did we do the Great New Zealander thing while the Olympics were on? Um, the Turkish, okay, no, the oh, peak yeah. is me, out of the back of the weekend, the Turkish story, the Turkish shooter story yeah. that um, we read out, um, which if you believed or not, it was up to you, but that went global. Yeah, it It's did. got millions and millions of views and like I was saying, Two different platforms uh, approached it in two different ways. Facebook are attacking us for fake news. Instagram's yeah. like, check it out. This is how funny is this? Yeah. So that's probably that's probably my um, my highlight actually of the week is laughing at that kind of dichotomy oh. of, of cultures between Facebook and Instagram. It's the best, and it's fired up on the Great New Zealander thing as well. Like we posted that every time we post this on on either social media, Facebook or Instagram. It's getting like three, four hundred people just weighing in in the comments. I love just like earnest people being like. I really like Richie McCaw, and that's just the comment. But brilliant. Well, thank you. Straight to the point. Thank you for your service. Um, Richie versus Dan overnight. It oh. was Richie by a landslide. Yeah, I knew it was going to be. I mean, look, he's like we had the weird, the good looks argument, but you just can't go past Richie, can you? Just no. Just all round kind of, like you're saying, and Carter's not putting out fires, is he? No, he's not. He's standing in his undies. Oh, he was at the Olympics, though, to be fair. Oh, yeah, did he bang the, bang the stick before the sevens? Yeah, he did. Yeah, what was that? Well, that's the thing that they do before the start of every event. It's like a... I don't a, understand used, it. It used to be... A, it's a French stage tradition. So before oh. the show would start, some dude would come out and bang the stick a couple of times to signal that the show's about to start. Oh, okay. So that's why they do it before all of the events. They, they get a, a former athlete or star or whatever to come out and bang the stick to, to start the the event yes um because yeah. i saw tony hawk doing some sort of like trick with it like yeah he, he did on a kick a yeah, yeah. yeah 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 something like that, that was pretty cool uh did you see mccarney talking to oh my god tony hawk? A, fuck, a massive fanboy did you yeah. see him like he was welling he, up afterwards. he went red yeah he went full red he's like tony hawk because <laughs> he just said you're still the goat man yeah you're still the goat i still believe and he's threw that up <laughs> it was like um it was like that guy who was being interviewed about wrestling, pro wrestling. He's like, it's still real for me, damn it. <laughs> um, God bless him. I thought he did a great job. He really threw Tony Hawk for a loop because I don't think, you know, foreigners, particularly Americans, they struggle with our accent. Yeah, and he's like, like where the fuck are you from? Yeah, because there were loads of media and he yeah. managed to collar him. He must have just like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. Like, kind of, he's in. he was in like safari short, kind of colourful <laughs> safari shorts and a suit jacket. Who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. Excuse yeah. me. Excuse me, can Tony. I ask you a few questions, please? <laughs> and the American's like, 
the fuck is that? Yeah, I'll ask. I'll answer your questions. <laughs> um, and he's like, "Thanks, mate." And then as Tony Hawk was walking away, he was like, "Thanks." M-. Like he went to say mate as well, and then realised he he doesn't say mate, and then no. threw like a weird piece and pout and dipped. Yeah. It was great though. You're still the goat. That was the greatest. <laughs> I still believe in you. Um, but anyway, back to the Great New Zealanders thing. Today it is another um, barn burner. It is Lisa Carrington versus Valerie Adams. Battle, Battle of the Dames. <laughs> Battle of the Dames. Um, I, I think that's very timely because Lisa Carrington just won last night. She's in the middle of her Olympic Games. So I think, you know, this is a popularity contest. Right now she'll be a lot more popular. Yeah, and um, so she's got a possibility of winning in the K2 and the K1. Yeah. So she can get another couple of gold medals. That is going to put her so far ahead of anyone else. She's already yeah. the greatest ever Olympian. Yeah, so Val's got two golds, a silver and a bronze. Yeah. Uh, this is just Olympics. Then yeah. obviously you've got your own um, world yeah. champs and stuff. Uh, the goat in the boat, she's got six golds as of this morning uh, and one bronze. I would say, though, that's not apples to apples because this is my Michael Phelps theory. Yeah, yeah. She's right. got more opportunities to win. Yeah. It'll be like if Valerie Adams was like, she's got the shot put, now she's allowed to throw a grapefruit, then she does a watermelon, and there's a separate gold medal for each of those. Yeah, and I, I, but I suppose it's consecutive Olympic Games. I mean, if she yeah. does it here, she's won three golds in three games, isn't she? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so Valerie didn't. No, Valerie didn't. I think that she go gold, silver, gold. Mm. Something like that. She had um, a spooch duck duck, sh- the book duck in the middle of there, the the steroid taker. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I've always just said like if, if Usain Bolt was allowed to run backwards, was allowed to do the three-legged race, was allowed to do the egg and spoon race, he would have more medals than Michael Phelps. So I don't think it's fair to call Michael Phelps the greatest Olympian of all time. Did you, just going back to Valerie, Yeah. well, I've got it in my head, did you watch any of the women's shot put qualifier? Uh, I've seen a few posts about it, but I didn't watch it. Have you no. seen the American lady who wears the full mask yeah, and glasses? The gimp mask. It is terrifying. At, it is the gimp mask. At Tokyo, she had a Hulk mask on. But at Tokyo, I thought that's because of COVID, because they had to wear masks all the time. Yeah. And I was sitting there watching my son. He's like, chick, she goes, he goes, check out this chick. And I'll be like, whoa, because she's got the full neoprene face and then gimp the, mask with the props boy glasses. Yeah, yeah. so he's <laughs> absolutely no, not even re- recognizable. And so we Googled it. Uh, and apparently she just got used to wearing a mask around that um, COVID time. Right. And she actually quite likes it because she can doesn't have to talk to anyone. Yeah. So I, people don't engage her because they can't see her, and so she, doesn't have to, she just, she just lives in her own head because she, she just gets a bit distracted too easily. Right. And she's got used to the feeling of having her face covered while competing. It's fucking weird. Is she definitely American? <laughs> I can't remember where she's from, but I'm pretty sure she's American. Yeah, she's uh, like it's very American behavior. Yeah, it is. It's like because it just sticks out. Everyone's doing it and goes, "Who the fuck is that?" Yeah. Um, and they all had shitters. The Kiwi, good on it. She qualified. Boom. Yeah. Like a luck, a second throw. Everyone else struggled. Maddie world, Wishy, world champ, out. Really? Yep. She couldn't even qualify. Oh, that's huge. Yeah. She um, had a bit of a cry. There's been a few. <laughs> yeah. Kissed her face. God, I can't imagine how heartbreaking it would be. You world champion. You oh, can't even qualify. I know. Um. It's, there's been a lot of people not complaining about like how things have been going, but you know world records aren't tumbling. People are, seem to be struggling in all their different sports. I don't really know what it is. I, I, I've heard a few people saying, oh, this is tough coming through the, the heats, the semifinals, blah, blah, blah. I quite like for the first time, and I didn't realise this was the first Olympics where they had the repechage, uh, repechage. for athletics. Yes. So because – I, I'm a big fan of the word repechage, and it's only ever used in rowing and, and the water sports is the repechage. You know what? In the NRL, that's basically what the top two teams get. They get a repechage yeah. because if they lose their first round, they get another chance to go again. We need to use repechage more. Good luck in, in, uh, introducing that into the NRL lexicon. <laughs> and also chef de mission. I, <laughs> I would like CEO, the word CEO to be replaced with chef de mission. You are the chef de mission of... ACC. The ACC. I would like. Um, I'm going to change my uh, signature on my email to G Lane Chef de Mission. Yeah. But you got. To, I'm going to have to put it not Chef de Mission because that's where we go. What's Chef? I'm going to have to phonetically Chef de Mission. Chef de Mission. Yeah. Don't yeah. you have um, what's his name? The cultural cultural attaché. Oh, I do. Yeah, I got Murray Hewitt, deputy cultural attaché's um, desk sign. Uh, on flight of I, the Concords. That I procured yeah. from the flight of the Concords. Yeah, I do actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, I, I encourage people worldwide to change their, if you've got a desk job, change your um, job title on your email. It doesn't fucking matter. 
and keep, watch they, the people that get upset about it. I know, it. I know, because this happened at um, work a few years ago when, you know, it was a bit free and easy. It was like create your own signature, you know, and you could put your own, just remember that, and your, your own font and colour and image and everything, and like your job title, whatever. So everyone just started making fucking going crazy with their job well, titles. They for, And they forced us to add a photo. They were yeah. like, it's going to be easier for people to recognise if they don't know you. You have to. And not, none of us in our office did it. So they kept chasing us up, kept chasing us up. Um, you should, you put Bashar al-Assad yes. as yours. Yeah. Joe Jury put Ed Sheeran yeah. as his. And I put um, Bill Cosby as mine. And guess who got in the most trouble? Me. <laughs> you? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. got an email saying it's inappropriate. Some people are going to get up. Some people are getting upset you got Bashar al-Assad. So the next one I put was me, but my head cut off. So it was just my torso. <laughs> I said, there you go. And they're like... Thanks. <laughs> they decided I'm not going to fight this battle. Um, <laughs> mine just got promptly taken down. Um, yeah. And then they didn't even notice that Joe's was Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> it gives an Ed Sheeran vibe. He was mistaken for Ed Sheeran in a lift in India. Fuck, it was funny. <laughs> Fuck, it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. So uncomfortable. What? And so did just one person say Ed Sheeran and then the rest of them were like, Fuck, no, I she's like, it could be. She's like, looked at me and went, oh my God. <laughs> Hi. And Joe's like, Hi. <laughs> and then he got pretty hammered the night before. She got out of the lift, quite attractive, and he goes, what happened last night? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, do you not know her? And, uh, and then we met her later on in the bar, and she said she was a bit embarrassed. She thought he was Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Shout out to Joe Jury, looking, yeah. like, looking like Ed Sheeran. Um, He's just ginger. Yeah. It's, with a ginger it's beard. A um, speaking of India, you know how we always talk about we are the top of the per capita middle? Top, top three. We're top three this yeah. year, but we're usually per capita, yeah. you know, the, the leader, which I think we sort of extrapolate into we are the most athletic country in the world. Oh, yeah, of course. So I looked at who is the least athletic country in the world mm. per capita, who has the fewest medals per capita. Do we have to put the racist alarm on here? No, it's not a race okay. thing. It's okay. what country are you from? Okay. It's not a race thing. I don't know why you want to make it a race thing. Uh, the li- you know, so I don't even want to do this segment now. So- <laughs> 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 it's like any time I talk about it. Yeah. Okay. I can say it. You've I, done the I, research. I, I don't think you should. <laughs> You've done the research. I've done the research. Fewest medals per capita is India. There you go. Therefore, <laughs> was that the racist alarm? I think it sounds more, yeah, it's a bit celebratory. We've though. lost our shape yeah. yet. Okay. They have won one medal per 468 million people in their country. They suck. They do suck. Yeah. How are they not better at throwing sports? Yeah. Cricket is their national sport. They should be amazing at javelin. Nobody should be able to beat India at javelin. Because javelin is is basically a glorified cricket ball throw. That's right, yeah. yeah. Back when the world wars were kicking off, the, each country would change the shape of their grenade to fit the sport they played. So Americans had a smaller baseball-shaped grenade. Yeah, all right. So, so they threw with a bent arm. That's true. And then, the, yeah, and then the English were lobbing straight arm ones because that's how they were thrown and bowling with the straight arm over the... Ah. And how come the Germans had the stick? With the grenade at the end. I guess they were running it like a relay. So they'd light it and then sprint down the trenches, pass it to Johan. He sprints down the trenches, passes it off to Wolfgang, and he hits it over the top. I reckon what would we have? We'd have a Frisbee. <laughs> a frisbee grenade. <laughs> God, that, yeah. Or a hacky sack. Snog it up and just fly kick the grenade that'd, over the... That'd be America. Yeah. They'd and, have a bunch of dreadlock dudes. Yeah, so knock it up and then you bicycle kick it out of the trench. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon, yeah. One of those, fo- who won the Football World Cup? Was it France? No. Uh, Spain, wasn't it? Yeah, Spain. The Euros. They'd, they'd have a football. Sized one. Sized one. They just punted over there. That's a big grenade. Yeah. Oh, we'd have a rugby ball. Yeah. Us and Aussie, we'd have a rugby ball. Kick a spiral bomb over into the other trenches. And uh, the Americans, I reckon they could, you could go, why didn't they have golf balls as grenades? Oh, I suppose any time uh, you're hitting it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about that. It's problematic. Um, just before we move on to an air break, we're going to come back and discuss the double gold, all of the Olympics. Uh, we sit next to the hits. They had a message come through and a, a formal complaint mm. that uh, they're running a competition on. Like, I don't actually know what the competition is, but it's basically if you hear this, ring it. Yep. They received a complaint from a person saying that they uh, were unable to win the competition because they are deaf. Is it rude to slag off deaf people on the radio? It's a great question. Is it rude mate. to stare at blind people? Yeah. Look, these are questions that uh, will baffle mankind <laughs> beyond this podcast, uh, Manai. You know, like if a tree falls over in a forest, you know. And no one's here. Does it, it, does it, to it, hear it, does it make it, a sound? Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> I don't think it is rude to slag deaf people off on the radio. <laughs> Neither. <laughs> Shout out to all of our deaf listeners uh, worldwide. Let's take a That's break. That's half our audience, let's be honest. That is half They've our audience. They've just got on auto-download. Yeah. Um, they gave up years ago. Well, we've actually got a, a, a farm of devices, mm. each of us underneath our beds, that are all set to auto-download. There's, there's about a million different phones and laptops and iPads underneath my bed that will automatically download this podcast. So if you're listening to it, congratulations, you're one of three actual people yeah. that listens to this podcast. The rest of it, we've just got a download farm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, at great risk to our own personal safety because that is a fire risk underneath our beds every night. All right, we're going to take one quick break. We're going to come back and talk about the actual Olympics. All right, overnight, Lane, we have started what I think could be quite a sizable haul for us at the Olympics. Uh, double gold. Elise Andrews won gold in the Kieran. I woke up to watch her accept her gold in the gold medal. Started my day bawling my oh, eyes the out. the dad was there. It's when the parents are there. Did you see the dad yeah. in the middle there? Parents don't do it for me. Oh, it's I think it's because I don't have kids. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, just having the dad in the centre of there celebrating with it, it's pretty awesome. I was just watching watching it, like a culmination of four years hard work, you know, a lifelong dream. She won the Kieran, which is the one where you start out behind homeboy on the bike. Yes. He's on the motorbike. Yeah. You guys all sit behind it, sort of jostling for positions. It's sort of like a rolling start in um, horse racing. Yeah. And then he shoots off. You guys go for it. And I loved her approach to it was get into the front and then just smoke everyone. So is the Karen one with the – it's not the points one, eh? That's the no. criterion or something. That's the point – The well, there is the points race. Then there's the Omnium. Well, yeah, it's the one. And What's then that? there's also the criterion. Oh. I don't know. This one's a straight <laughs> win. It's a straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so they start off, they do a lap or two behind the guy on the motorbike. Yeah. He starts out at 30Ks. He works his way up to about 50. Then he peels off. And then they have to go. And it's basically the idea is it takes a bit of energy out of your legs, plus also there's a bit of jock jockeying for position before they take off. Yeah. Which she completely um, undid by just shooting out to the front. Staying there. And riding her bike faster than anyone else was riding their bike. That's how you win. That is how you win a bike race. She showed everyone how she did it. She's like, I'm not going to fuck, because the whole point of it is that you've got to jostle for position because you're stuck behind this bike. Yeah. She's like, fuck that. I'm just going to ride faster than everyone else. And she did. It was powerful. It was dominant. And it, it made me well up this morning. Is that a specialty role, the motorbike drive guy? Yeah. yeah. Girl, whatever, whoever it is, the motorbike person. It is quite a funny one because there's a concrete velodrome in Waimati. So when I was growing up, I did a bit of uh, track cycling and one of the dads just bought a second. Sorry, you did a bit of track cycling. Yeah, you did a bit of track cycling in my day. You can't just throw that into a conversation and did a bit of track cycling. Yeah, you know, right. Holly Edmonston, uh, Olympic uh, cyclist from Tokyo, yeah. taught her everything she knows. And right. She'll admit that. You yeah, ask okay. Holly. Yeah. Holly, if you're listening. What what event did you compete in? You just casual, just go around the velodrome? Or, yeah. <sighs> Whatever you yeah, want, okay. man. If you're riding a bike, I'll ride it with you, and I'll ride it faster. I actually quit cycling after a road race in St. Andrews, which is halfway between Waimidi and Timaru. Was, usually when you're biking in a pack, you know. Okay, so you're road racing as well as velodroming? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't like the, like, you know. I yep. won't go down the mountain. It's the only problem. Okay. Um, anyway, so you know how you take like a lap mm. because the person in front's working harder. So yeah. when you're on a road race, you'll take a lap so that, um, you know, you guys work together. to Yeah. Um, like the peloton. The peloton. And I was racing against a girl and I said, um, you, you take a lap. She goes, no, I'm too tired. I like, okay, sweet. I'll so just, the mixed race. Yeah, mixed race. Um, uh, and then right at the end, she rolled me on the finish line after telling me for the last five Ks that she was too tired to take a lap. And then she rolled me and I learned a lesson and the lesson was cycling's not for me. <laughs> Never trust a cyclist, that's what I'd say. Never trust a cyclist. Yeah. Um, anyway, I forget, forgot what the point of that was. Oh yeah, so Holly's dad just bought a motorbike, secondhand motorbike, and then welded metal onto the back of it. And so, you know, when you're riding around behind it, yeah. the wheel will touch the bar behind the motorbike. And so they didn't realize that. And then they had to put the roller thing on it Oh. It was very, like, Kiwi ingenuity. I can imagine just a nifty 50 game. <laughs> that's and exa just like blue that's exactly what it was. Blue smoke pissing out the exactly back. exactly what you <laughs> <laughs> When they would train, they would just drive around back roads and they had, like, a big Nissan Mistral thing and the back door would be open. And so they'd be, Holly would be training, I'd be sitting in the boot of the Mistral eating chocolate, just throwing shit at her. Hurry up, Holly! And that got her to the Olympics. Um but anyway, yeah, it is. It is one of the most ridiculous things. Anyway, she won. Um, and also the women's K4 won gold. Same thing I always say about Lisa Carrington. You can't let her out the parking lot. You cannot let Lisa Carrington get into her boat or she's going to beat you at a boat race. 
This morning, she, or overnight, I watched the replay and paused it after the first stroke. We were already six inches ahead of anyone else. So you're suggesting if anyone wants a chance at winning gold, they have to full Tanya Harding. Tanya Harding. They're going to have to. The boat. There's the no lady other, of the lake. There's no other way. Once yeah. you let her get into that boat, the race is over. From the first stroke, we were already ahead. Still love their kick-ass uniforms, the plaits, the glasses. And the fact that the they cat. all look exactly the same yeah. too. Yeah, it looks mean. It does, yeah. It just shows it one one team, one dream. That's right. That, that K4, I love the K4 because it's this amount of wash that comes out. It's like four propellers just yeah. taking off. I love it. Especially the start when they have that shot of all of them and it's like... <laughs> <laughs> they um, show uh, zoomed in. I think I might have said this the other day when she did her um, individual one, but they zoomed in on her hands. She's holding the oar so delicately, like so lightly, you would think she'd be squeezing the shit out of that thing. Yeah, yeah. She's not, and I don't understand how she doesn't drop it. It doesn't look like looks like she's barely holding on, like barely holding on to it at all. Maybe it's she's got a kind of a muscle grip that just gives it a bit of a bit of leaves. Let's not go there. <laughs> she's not even holding on to it. She's just holding her hands in place. Um, but yeah, so she won the K four gold um, over the weekend. Just when's the closing ceremony again? Is it Sunday, Sunday night? Sunday night. Um, yeah, Sunday night it all kicks off. So, um, or Sunday or Sunday night, Monday morning, I guess, because they don't have it throughout the day. They all finish off with the relay events. The relay events all finish off at the track oh, right. and everything like that. Um, um, again, the walking out of the way so we can get the marathon underway. Oh, the walking, man. We've been watching this in the oh, office. I can't deal with it. I can't deal with it either. It's ridiculous. Um, the, they look like they're doing the walk where – you're about to shit yourself. Yeah, it's the festival poos walk. Yeah. It's like you're up the front and you're like, uh-oh, uh-oh, I need to do a party poo. And then you <laughs> you then you get to the toilets and obviously there's a massive queue and you're like, ah. And then you have to do the walk again to the nearest bush or wherever. Is that the training that they do? They just wait until they desperately need to go. Yeah. And then they're like, right, 10Ks, hit it. <laughs> and then you just waddle. The nearest portaloo is 21Ks that way. Yeah. Either do that or shit yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, and then even if you win, it's I reckon it's the only, I reckon it's the only sport at the Olympics that doesn't make their athletes hotter, you know. Yeah, yeah I know. I mean, look, the, the, there's something for the mums and the dads on the walk, but it's just the way they're walking. Nah. Just it's just really a real off off putting. There's nothing for either of them. Uh, this morning, uh, if we look further abreast, the New Zealand US beat Serbia in a nail biter in the basketball. Gutted for Serbia. Yeah, I really would. I really like to see the wind get taken out of the American sails with that one. Yeah. Let's Just go. too much talent on that American oh, team. I know, and they know it as well. Yeah, well, that is that's that's Americans in general. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Jokic was on that Serbian team. Couldn't quite get the job done. I reckon it's also a bit of bit of kind of crowing as well. If Jokic had managed to beat America, he he's got the best comeback in the NBA if there's any smack talk. Not that he does anyway. No, I'm a shit. But he would, he, would like, shit. he would just go to something like, "I have gold." Yeah, <laughs> or something like that. That would have been his one comeback. He'd just be angry they're interrupting his horse racing in the off season. Uh, Noah Lyle, speaking of American arrogance, he all he's been talking about for the last few years is how he's going to win gold and gold in the hundred and two hundred. Yeah, because he calls the hundred his wife and the hundred uh, the two hundred his wife. Yeah, the hundred his mistress. Yeah. So he's only taken up the hundred in the last couple of years. Two hundred's always been his his home, his two dang wai wai, and he shat the bed. Yep, he finished in bronze and he got smoked uh, by a man from Botswana or Tobago. He he wasted him. He like came around the corner first and then just got further away from him then. In the end, Noah Lyles finished third. Did you see when he came out? You know he always does too much when he comes out. Oh, yeah, the big he, bounce and everything. He came sprinting out. He like waited though, announced him, read his name out. He waited for ages, then came sprinting out, jumping around, yahooing, as if he'd already won. This and is a massive comes, dick shrinker, isn't it? Comes out and got bronze and then in the most American shit of all time, he lies down on the floor, then he go waits for someone to bring him out of fucking wheelchair. They basically stretched him out of the stadium. Now his press team's released that he's got COVID. We're not doing COVID anymore. Yeah, get fucked. That was the last Olympics. Nobody gives a shit if you got COVID. Pull out of the race. His, his ego needed to be wheelchaired off. That's all. Yeah. Not uh, his body. No. His ego. It was the most American shit of all time. And all the reporting is just saying, oh, he got third. It's like, no, he, you know. Suck. Yeah. <laughs> Tobago won. Why can't we talk about that? <laughs> Potentially the amount of smack he was talking about it. Yeah. About it. It's, it's, it's home and host. 200 I've got. Hundreds, you know. Yeah. Is the give or take. Of that's the one, the high risk one. Yeah. So I, I reckon we park that clown because he, he also didn't win the hundred meters. That <laughs> other guy's foot crossed the line first. Yeah, it, I don't. Know. And I hate when people are like, "Oh, it's always been chess." You didn't know that. <laughs> Stop pretending you knew that before you watched that race. <laughs> I kind of, I 
made it up on Matt and Jerry Breakfast Show when they said, how do, how do you determine that if they've got the same time? And I just went, I think it's your torso. <laughs> so I got it. Yeah, I nailed it. You were right. But I just hate when people are commenting online being like, it's always been your chest. Though. Yeah, whatever. You didn't know that. So do you think maybe then the people need to get, pick the chest up a bit more? Yeah, well, there was a lot of memes going around of um, Lightning McQueen from the Cars movie who stuck his tongue out to win a race. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically that. Um, that's about all that caught my eye across the, the oh. evening's action in the Olympics. Oh, sorry, the bronze as well in the sailing. Oh, uh, yeah. The mixed double sailing. Mixed doubles. Yep. Um, they won bronze and then dived into the water. One of the great celebrations at the Olympics is jumping into the water off your sailboat. I want to see when the goat in the boat wins gold to do an Eskimo roll. Like, go over the thing, roll over, roll back, because they know how to do the roll. Full fin butcher. Yeah, yeah. Just full fin butcher it. Um, the mixed sailing, Yeah. I mean, discussed it. Why is sailing split by gender? Yeah, yeah. same with lawn bowls. <laughs> is lawn bowls at the Olympics? No. No, it's at the Com, Com Games, yeah. but it's split by gender as well. I wouldn't think there was a, there's no strength advantage there. No. I suppose, maybe sailing, I think there maybe is a little bit in terms of counterbalance of the boat. Pulling on the ropes. You know, know, like there's a bit of strength really required. You have to be fairly fit to sail some of those skiffs and whatever. Yeah. So maybe, and strength in terms of. Is it a weight issue? But then they're not weight classes. So no. I don't know. Yeah, anyway. I do not know. I can't someone tell who you. Knows, but someone who knows more, let yep. us know. Yeah, well, there's two people that know more, and they won bronze uh, overnight. That is Kiwi Gold. So God bless them as well. Um, the All Blacks team was named yesterday as well. We didn't get a chance to talk about it. I forgot that they were even playing this week, I've got to yeah. be honest. They snuck up, didn't they? The Argentinians have just snuck into the country under the radar of Olympics. Yeah. Um, and the rugby championship kicks off because the first three games of the year were just kick about England, Fiji. Yeah. This is the rugby championship kicking off on, in Wally. In earnest. I saw a thing doing rounds on social media the other day saying that New Zealand haven't won a, a major um, trophy since 2015. And I was like, what? what Bledisloe Rugby Championship? championship? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? Is that, a, that must be a Northern Hemisphere. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, Razor has named a brave, brave team to face Argentina. It was in the Herald this morning. Uh, <laughs> at fullback, Ethan De Groot on the wing, Cody Taylor at centre, Tyrell Lomax. They, they listed the team in reverse order. <laughs> I love this because just think in your mind, these guys in these positions, because I've just thought about Tupu Vai at inside centre. Imagine him coming off the short ball. Uh, from Sam Darry on oh no, a from uh, Ethan Blackadder at first five. <laughs> It'll be hard to deal with. I reckon harder than that to deal with would be Ethan De Groot trying to field kicks all night. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a real shit show. And then obviously a front row of Bowden Barrett, Severus, and Anton Leonard Brown would be tough. I think Anton Leonard Brown could compete as obviously his brother's a prop for the Highlanders. Yeah. So I think he's got some pedigree. Jordy, and then our number six would be Damien McKenzie. <laughs> yeah, that's that. That's problematic. Yeah. Um, and the locks of Geordie Barrett, sure enough, oh, that's, oh, that's yep. fine. But Mark Talia, the other lock, <laughs> at five. Yeah. So the biggest story, I think, out of this, this team is that Rico Ioane has been benched. Yep. Um, Anton Leonard Brown is in there in his stead. A couple of youngsters on the bench, though, as well. Josh Lord is on the bench, yeah. along with um, Side Titty. Uh, Wallace Side Titty yeah. there as well. So that's a, a bit of a, a bit of surprise. And obviously, Will Jordan back. They play Argentina on Saturday. You're commentating that one. Yes, with, uh, with Matt Heath. Yep. So we are at 7 o'clock. Um, we are doing that one. Uh, it's on Sky Sports Select and iHeartRadio and on Radio Hodaki. Um, so if you want to listen on the classic radio, um, you text north to 3483 or south to 3483, get the frequencies. The Sky Sort Select thing is because obviously Com Games are yeah. on all nine channels. So. Yeah, well, the Olympics, but yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the Olympics. But um, hey, just with the All Blacks, our hunch, our agenda hunch. Oh, yes. Got this. It's on there. It's, um, I've gone for a power play. Uh, I've gone Sevu Reese, uh, Severed Peace, Mark Talia, and Bowden Barrett to score three plus tries combined. Jeez. So, I mean, basically, what's the back three to score three or more tries? Yeah. Uh, at five bucks. So um, that's what I've laid the agenda bet on for you, Saturday. Does it concern you that Will Jordan's on the bench? Do you think that one of them may potentially get subbed out at some point for him? Yes, I think Bodie Barrett will. Mm. Um, but that's still saying Mark Tullier and Sevi Reese, try scoring machines. Do you think we're um, gonna? You think we're gonna waste Argentina? I don't think we're gonna waste them. Mm. Uh, I heard Scott Barrett do an interview, and uh, God bless him, we'll get that audio where he says um, against Argentina, it's always a ding dong. Oh, and then back in my head, I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> ding dong. So yeah, dog rolls picking a ding dong. Okay. Yeah. Oh, look, they got hammered by fucking a French B team recently. So Okay. But you never know. 
you never know with the Argentinians. If they nah. if they're in the game in the first thirty minutes, forty minutes, watch out. Yeah. Um, they they did us in Christchurch. You remember? They just held on, held on throughout the game, and did us. I worked in the mainstream sports media at that time, and Perfect. my job had never been easier. <laughs> when the All Blacks were losing all those games, I was like, "This is fucking sweet." You just open up the lines. Open up the lines and just go, "Hey, All Blacks, where did we go wrong?" Well, well, bloody, I think that the, the problem is the bloody fitness problem. I always says that. Well, my bloody coach is too busy break dancing. That's what it's <laughs> yeah, going to be. Yeah. Too busy concentrating dancing, not enough defensive tactical knowledge. Yeah. Um, and meanwhile, while all of this is going on, the National Provincial Championship starts tonight, apparently. Tonight, the NPC, yeah, kicks off. I love the NPC. Um, I, because it's, you go back to your roots. You go, I go back to supporting the Mulus. Yeah. Um, I don't live there anymore, so I head up to North Harbour Stadium and watch a bit of North Harbour. Oh, yeah, yeah. Only because you have a few club players that are playing in the team, so you've still got that allegiance. Like, we go down to our club and watch North Shore play. We see a couple of the guys oh, play. Oh, right. You know, they see everyone. It's, I, I like it. It's more – Yeah, same here. It's, it's a bit more – fuck, sounds, this sounds a bit fucking weak, but it sounds, it's a bit more real and a bit more – Yeah. You know, you know the players. You've got a bit more of a connection with the NPC than I mm. think I believe I do with – even though I'm full Chiefs mana – um, and they're pretty much the Mulus, but <laughs> but that's more franchise rugby than it yeah. is like yeah, and yeah. that's why I like the Heartland Championship so much because you know I'm from South Canterbury, so I didn't have a like Canterbury. It's three hours away, so I don't really have a connection with them. Where is the nearest Heartland team to Auckland? Is it King Country? Oh, I, I don't know. We I don't even know where King Country is. From wow, Tikawiti, <laughs> south of Hamilton. Um, would it be the Thames Valley Swamp Foxes? I was just trying to think, we need to get to a South Canterbury game. And uh, no. go, go, going down to South Canterbury is a bit challenging at the moment. So, oh, is it what? So if we could potentially engineer one in the upper North <laughs> Island, North Island, and then we could just get a roadie together, get a van together, yeah, pull up full of export ultras, park up. The other thing I love about um, Heartland is talent discrepancy because you'll have guys who in a couple of years could be in all-black contention versus like a 50-year-old Sparky. <laughs> Dairy farmer. Dairy farmer, yeah. So yeah. I just the talent discrepancy that you can see in there creates some freakish tries that you just wouldn't see in other, um, in other grades. Also, horrific injury risk, which is always good to watch as well. Mind you, I, I saw the Auckland team training. It's a dangerously good team. There's a lot of Blues players. Oh, they there. might as well be a super Adrian team. Chodes in there. You've got Anton Segnes in there. You've got the, the National Bank horse, Zahn Sullivan's in there. Like, it's, actually, yeah. it's a good team. It is a powerful team. Yeah. Um, anyway. NPC across the weekend. God, there is a lot of sport on this weekend. Warriors playing on Sunday. Let's take one more quick break and we'll come back with yours, please. Yours, please. Brought to you by Lida, home of the lasagna topper. Handful of them to get through so far this morning. Um, let's just get straight into the first one. Call it yours, please. This is controversy. <laughs> there needs to be an investigation. I, I, I respect you guys for running a multi-platform voting system like the MMP debacle, but um, should just stick to one one vote, one count. Because I could go vote three times for Jason Gunn, and that just fucks it all up. Then you get some muppet who votes one, one, one. I forget to vote on that, forget to vote on that, you know? It's just, it's, it's just controversial. <laughs> sort it out, fellas. Right, ballot stuffing. He's... he's, uh, he's Oh, uh, yeah, he yeah. wants to stop the count. Yeah, he's <laughs> alleging we're, we're involved in ballot stuffing. <laughs> Well, yeah, look, I mean, you can mo vote across multiple platforms. If you're able to do that, if you've got those channels, then yeah, go for it. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I would say we're very, very open to you doing that exact thing. Yeah. Also, there were thousands of votes for all of these ones. Like, if you think that your three votes are going to are gonna sway it. Yeah. Well, go. Then go hard. Stuff the ballot. Yeah. Go for it. I think so. Start paying people. I think Jason Gunn was paying people. Yeah, he um, was. I saw he had an article in the Herald pushing it as well. Oh, really? His letter to his younger self. And he's just pushing the PR out there. Was it, you know, one day, kid, you're going to be considered one of the greatest New Zealanders of all time yeah. by the Alternative Commentary Collective? That was, he left that bit out. I don't know oh, okay. I don't Glossed over that. Um, yeah, no, stuff to ballot, 100%. Get, get involved. Uh, another caller here. Yours, please. Yeah, fellas. Me again. Shit <laughs> quality. Uh, is this Olympics got the most controversy? With the Aussie with the nose candy, the swimmer retiring and then getting kicked out for causing a muck, the couple causing a muck, uh, the gymnast with the secret OnlyFans or whatever, the gymnast with the Parmesan sponsorship. <laughs> um, so there's plenty of other controversy. You guys figure it out. Or any old ones? I 
my thoughts on it, uh, nothing much happened in Tokyo because of COVID. Yeah. You weren't allowed supporters. They weren't allowed to party in the village. No. Uh, and the one before that was in Rio. And I think in terms of your TikTokers and your social influencers was just in its infancy eight years ago in terms of the power of it. Oh, yeah. So I think this is the first one where we're seeing – just a total wounding and own goals of people, like you know, and yeah. the consequences of that. Because all these people, it's all it's always been happening. Yeah, you think that Australian dude was the first Olympian to finish his event and go and try and buy cocaine? Yeah, and same with the bang, we- the banging, yeah, and the banging oh. and distraction in the village. Do you think that's the first time? But yeah, no. I since yeah. ancient, um, since ancient Athens. That's exactly what they've been doing. And Why also, do you think they did it naked back And also the reporting of it as well. It, it spreads like wildfire a lot yeah. quicker. Yeah, 100%. But even he didn't even mention the stuff that's happened like on the track. Um, Shelley and Fraser Price didn't run in the 100-meter final because they didn't let her into the warm-up track. Yeah, what was that about? What, that seemed to just get swept under the carpet. So the, she wasn't staying in the Olympic Village, neither was Shikari Richardson, um, and they had been coming in in their own like private taxis or mm. Ubers or whatever. And that had been fine. And then overnight, before their final, they changed the rule to say that you had to be on the team bus. Athlete bus or something. Yeah, but, and then they showed up. No one told them. And so they got stopped at the, at the gate. And they had to then walk around. It took them an hour to walk around. By then, they couldn't warm up. Shelley and Fraser Price was like, fuck that, I'm not racing. And then Shikari Richardson ran silver. So it was like, I don't, that's some real... Well, also, heads will roll for that kind of thing. Yeah, that's a bit odd. And I remember the men's skull final got delayed by an hour and a half because the bus got stuck. Bus got stuck. The uh, skateboard dude's bus broke down and they had to skateboard to the thing. That's balling, though. Never mind all of the athletes who have come down with E. coli from swimming through a river of shit <laughs> upstream. You know, and then the poor women in their triathlon, they came out and it was raining on cobblestones and so they were all wiped out. Four years of training and all you got for your efforts was E. coli and you're wiped out in a a skid that had nothing to do with you, you know? So I, I do think this has been one of the most controversial games from the opening ceremony <laughs> I bet I, and but, throughout. Yeah, and if, yeah, I think so as well, but only purely because the amount of content coming out of it is next level as well. Oh, I think even in the radio days, swimming through a river of shit would have made would, it. <laughs> that would have made the headlines, for sure, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, I agree. No, another call here, yours, please. G'day fellas, yeah. Andrew from Napes here. G'day Andrew. I was just listening to your podcast episode where you were talking about the run up a drain pipe game. Um, what other sports could transfer from Olympic to real life? Obviously, as you see, bank robber for a sport climber. Is there anything else or is it just a complete have? <laughs> See ya. Um, well, hunting with a javelin would be good. Yep. I mean, if you could spot a 12-pointer from 60 metres away. Oh, my God. And then just hurl a, hurl a jab straight through its neck. Yeah. That'd be pretty badass. I reckon that's probably the next step in um, Tory Peter's career. Go down and find the field of moose and hit it with a javelin. Bring it down. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, obviously, any of the rowing is going to help if you're actually trying to row out to a bigger ship. Yep. Uh, that could potentially translate. Short of that, I think we've strayed so far from the original Olympics. Obviously, anyone who's a fencer, if they came at you with a, with a rapier, you, that'd be pretty hard to deal with. That's true. I mean, and pole vaulting, if you're looking to scale a wall of a castle or something, you could just hoof up a yeah. pole vaulter. Yeah, I've seen the one that they do. Is it in the Netherlands where they jump over... Um, oh, the canal. The canals. Yes, yeah. that's, that's, that's pretty cool. With that. Um, actually, we were asking the other day where that sport came from. That's probably it, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know that too many of them are translatable, to be honest, to real life. I mean, look, uh, mugging in the 100 metres would be good because if you mug someone, just fucking took off. And then 10 seconds later, you're 100 metres away. Yeah. 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 Uh, that would be hard to deal with. I saw a man get mugged in, in Paris once, and it was one of the most complex manoeuvres I've ever seen. He was wearing a backpack over one shoulder, and this, these two muggers ran from opposite corners and so one of them hit him took the bag he spun around by the time he realized that his bag had been taken another one had run a cut off of the back of him like he was the second five running off the first five ah oh. they're both sprinting in different directions ran around different corners so all the guy saw was like he gets hit he turns around his bag's gone and two guys are sprinting in opposite directions elaborate and he was just like well i'm fucked <laughs> he didn't bother chasing he's like he looked at me i was like well, i can't help you 
Because what are you going to do? Chase them around the corner and get shivved? Yeah, true. Um, so, yeah, I think the 100-meter sprint, maybe the relay as well, um, could be good for mugging. <laughs> the relay, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, all right, one more caller here, yours, please. Yeah, good day, G-Lane. Um, look, I seriously worry for your safety, brother. Um, <laughs> the snatch and the clean and jerk. You're on a hiding to nothing here, mate. You're, uh, I can't wait to see, you know, popped elbows, popped shoulders, uh, pulled pec muscles, uh, possibly a blown foo-foo valve. <laughs> uh, but anyway, as long as uh, Joe Jury and Manai's recording, you beauty. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I, I look, I thought about this overnight because I'm going away on a ski holiday. Uh, I'm going skiing the week after next week. And after last year's effort, when I tore my hamstring, got banana boated off, I, you know, I'm a bit conscious about getting injured. Yeah. Um, so I think I was thinking about it with the snatch. Mm. I'm not going to snatch. No. Nah. That's fucking it's way off, way beyond my technical expertise. So probably too is the clean and jerk. Um, I think clean and jerk. Yeah, I'm going to clean and jerk, but I'm, it's going to be baby steps. Like just give me the bar yeah. and, and I'm, I'll let me just practice and get the technique. Oh, okay. And then maybe put five on each side. Then to, don't just give me 70 kgs in which I will shit myself. Yeah, okay. So baby steps, I think. I was I'm thinking okay about it. That, because that's more opportunity for you to humiliate yourself as well. <laughs> so we've had a gym offer up their, uh, their facilities. Yes. And that was quite good. And, I mean, it came with a couple of barbs, i.e. it's emptied during the, during the day so no one will see your humiliation. Yeah. Um, but I'll take that. I think it was 77 kilos. But you, then you offered the 69, though, which was the, the lowest of the snatch. Yes. So that was the snatch weight. Um, was it, no, I think it was even lower than that, wasn't it? Uh, snatch oh, weight. i have to check the tape. But, yeah, all right. So you, what, you don't want to go out there next week? No, I'll do it. Okay, okay. I'll do it, but I'm just – don't give me the full weight and then go snatch it yeah. because, like I was saying, I, I, I probably will shit myself. I think, well, final step here is if you are a weightlifter of any note, or if you're a coach of some sort, if you you know compete in this kind of thing, if you've got any expertise, if you could come out and coach Lane through it, um, reach out as well. And we'll we'll film this next week, <laughs> see how we go. Um, keep an eye out on this feed later on today because we will have the ACC sports book with the TAB uh, plus the commentary on tomorrow of the All Blacks and, and the Waz. The, the Waz are on Sunday. Myself and Chris Key have yet to commentate a win, and so, it's the Dolphins and away. Uh, it is do or die. Um, all of that to look forward to this weekend. <laughs> we'll see you later on. You've been listening to the ACC's Agenda Podcast, brought to you by Export Ultra. For more episodes, like and follow on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts.